Okay, and we are live. Welcome to yet another uh, CEO Community AMA stream event. I'm here with Chris. How are you doing this afternoon, Chris? I'm good, Alex. Uh, how, how are you doing? Ready for round two? I am ready for round two, and hopefully we'll be getting uh, less less issues with the technical side of things this time. Uh, that was a little bit annoying last time that that happened, but happy to be back. Me too. Well, I think uh, why don't we just jump straight on in and start answering some questions. There have been a whole bunch of questions, including some last minute questions which have come through. We'll try and get through as many as we possibly can. Um, and the first one is a technical question of sorts. This person is saying they were in a bunch of session groups and their account was unfortunately deleted. They couldn't remember their password. And now they're struggling to get a new account. Any suggestions for this particular person, Chris? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, time to make some new friends. Uh, if you don't store your seed phrase, unfortunately, uh, we can't help you. Nobody can help you in that situation. And that's sort of the pros and cons of having complete control over your private communication. So uh, it's, a, it's a small lesson to make, to have. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're, you're private, you're safe. So um, yeah, I look forward to you making some new friends on session. Just create a, create a new account, get a new seed phrase. Definitely write it down this time, put it in a safe space, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Yeah, there are a bunch of guides, um, including I think there is some advice both in our support and documentation as a tram goes by in the background um, about where you can store your, your recovery phrase for session or indeed your um, secret words for your Oxen wallet. But it's very important to make sure that you back those up, as you said, you know, when you're the one that's in control, uh, you also have to. Well, there's no one to save you, basically. If you lose uh, that recovery phrase, that's part of part of the design, part of the system. That's how people have those guarantees. Um, next question is about the OPTF, uh, and the question is: Has the OPTF considered buying Oxen back from the open market? Obviously, uh, with the way that the network works, you know, operators have create sell pressure. Have we thought about just buying that auction straight up off the market to try and alleviate that pressure? Uh, yeah, we, we actually did that in the past, um, which was good. Uh, and sort of a low in the market of quite a few years ago. Um, we would definitely consider doing it again. Uh, I think that when, like when you're considering to do this, it's sort of important to you know, think, if you're going to buy back crypto right now, uh, and you have, you know, whatever liquid assets, is it best to, you know, buy your product or build your build your product? Uh, right now, we're definitely in the like, you know, how how quickly and how good can we build the product phase? Definitely, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think there's also the element of, sure, we could just, um, you know, buy oxen back off the market right now, right? And then I suppose prop it up a little bit and and change the economic situation very slightly. But I think the thing that would be much healthier for the project, much more bullish for the project, and ultimately more valuable both for the network and the operators is to have monetization come through. And I think the buyback is a lot more meaningful if it comes from monetization side as opposed to just the foundation you know, using its treasury to buy back Oxen right now. Uh, that's yeah. just my personal perspective on it. Yeah, exactly. So the, the the whole game plan with monetization is to fulfill that demand, to, to fulfill that buy side, buy side pressure to make sure that the use of nodes are sustainable and those stakers are rewarded. Um, so yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're going as hard as we can to reach that point. Um, and yeah, I have like I have something I want to say, but I'm like, no, nope, can't announce this yet. Uh, I got to keep that. I got to keep that for later. Uh, there, there'll be some exciting announcements in, in the you know next few days. So I'll just leave that. <laughs> sure thing. Sorry, so I got like I was like, yeah, sorry. I, I want to um, say it. I'm like, no, it's not the time. It's not the time. It's always tempting. It's always tempting to just drop that knowledge. You know, uh, I'm gonna give a sh quick shout out to Zach over in the live chat. Uh, first person to drop in and leave a comment today. Remember that we will be answering questions that were sent in before the stream, uh, but also if you're here with us right now, uh, you do have the opportunity to drop your questions in the chat and we'll try and get to them at the end there as well. But for now, we're gonna move on to some more early bird questions. 
This one's short and sharp for you, Chris. Looking at for Android, when? When? Uh, yeah, so when, you, I think there's a little little test version you can go play with right now. Uh, we're not focusing on that right now. You need to, before building out all the platform specific items and polishing them up to um, sort of scalable position, we need the core good to go. So um, we're refactoring a few things with looking at, we've got that MVP, we've got those tests sort of builds. Um, and we are looking to release Exit Marketplace for you know, desktops before we go to mobile. So um, it's not a priority for this year. Uh, you can play with it now. We're not going to pour resources into it until it's the right time. Totally understandable. Next question is a really interesting one, actually. Can we have an ONS only mode for communities? Obviously, this would be useful to prevent spamming. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. A little little ONS club, kind of like a, uh, what's that really stupid NFT project or oh, any of those projects, really? <laughs> uh, but like that concept of having like a little club of uh, of of uh, people who with skin in the game, uh, that'd be kind of cool. Especially if you only want to be contacted with people who are serious and you don't want to get engaged with uh, individuals who, you know, just creating burner account, they're there for a second harassing you and going away. Yeah, it could be pretty cool. I'm, I'm interested in that concept. It's not on the roadmap, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool concept that I'm definitely looking to consider. I think this would be a really interesting idea. I wonder if we'd be able to fold this in with Session Pro as well. Um, yeah. I suppose you could have pro-only communities as well, or ONS-only communities, which could be operated by pro users. Um, ONS will probably be involved somehow in Session Pro. Or maybe, I'm not actually sure. That's not up to me. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, this person is asking if it would be possible for them to pay the devs uh, to prioritize a specific technical issue which they're running into with the Oxen wallet. Yeah, um, like possibly. We have done this in the past, but we, when we, when we plan and we sort of like build towards a certain goal, uh, the outcome is going to be mass adoption, mass sort of scalability. And when we sort of take little breaks and build little tools on the side for individuals or small groups, uh, it could be lucrative. Uh, but for instance, we did one for Huawei. I think we did sort of push notification stuff for Huawei um, to get allowed on their app store. Um, but then I think Session sort of like taken off those app stores in the end. So it, it was, and, and there's sort of this ongoing challenges that come from that as well. So, you know, when we start something, we like to keep doing it or like maintain it um, as best we can. And doing little thing often means more little things, you know. So it's so we're interested. Uh, actually, just reach out to us uh, if if it is worth doing. If you're doing something cool, if you're doing something that's scaling, going in that direction, we're interested. So yeah, reach out to me, the team, hit up the email, or through session. You can there's a little customer support thing on the website, or in the Telegram. We're often in Telegram and Discord, so just hit us up. All session, hit us on session. Absolutely, and it's worth mentioning as well. You know, I was looking into this uh, issue which was raised. And first of all, Wallet3 is being worked on. Um, so there will be improvements coming to the wallet. And as well as that, I know Jason has been in touch with this particular person, is aware of the issue. So uh, potentially it will be resolved anyhow. Uh, next question, are there any plans for wallet integration into session, for example, ONS or Pro features in the future? Yeah, if, if we could sort of snap our fingers and know that adding that feature right now would not cause high friction, uh, we'd probably go and do it because it would be great to allow people to, um, you know, communicate and send transactions privately in session. Um, we do see a lot of friction points from doing that though, and it will really slow down and deteriorate the growth of uh, of session. So if we, you know, if we add the wallet right now. Uh, yeah, I, I think there are some challenges with the app stores in terms of like what you're allowed to do and how they take carts and all sort of stuff. So adding that feature too early would add more friction points, which would slow us down from mass like, multi-million scalability of the application. So uh, I do want to do it. I think it will slow us down. Uh, it's a matter of when, uh, not if, and then what that would look like as well. It'd be fantastic to stake, you know, control view and all sort of stuff of your service nodes in session in a completely private way. Uh, and chat to communities and, and service and operators in a private way as well. So there's so many really cool applications in there. Um, it's all about priorities and then getting to that point. 
and you go into more detail about the runway and reassure everyone about our finances. Excellent. Yeah, so we we have sort of very liquid assets and we have less liquid assets. Um, with our extremely liquid assets, this is like fiat, stable coins, that sort of thing, uh, with no lockups in any way, shape or form. We have about you know, 2.9 million Australian dollars, um, which is, you know, it's great. It's more than it's about a year and a half of just cash to go, just so we don't get put in any squeezes. Uh, then we also have about $8.7 million in less liquid assets. So we actually do some, like we've done some contracting work. Uh, we have a contract that we're sort of kicking off very shortly. Um, so we have some actual incomes that we get per year at this stage, which is good. So yeah, we have some funds coming in the next three to six months. Um, and we also have quite a substantial stake in Chainflip. Um, we're not, in terms of the figures that I gave, the 8.7 million, it's not including, so we stake some, so we stake Ethereum and that should unlock in the next 12 months or whatever, so it's good. But the, um, what was it, not counting? Like we have money on exchanges, obviously for liquidity, not counting that, and also not counting the Oxen. We don't count the Oxen as a liquid asset, um, but we do have a substantial amount of Oxen and other cryptos, but we don't count those. So this is purely just cash in the bank uh, and uh, sort of like less liquid assets that are due to unlock over the next 12 months. What else does that include? Yeah, um, yeah just like contracts, income, and- Grants uh, potentially as well, I suppose. Oh, grant potentially as well, yeah. So going through a few grant, pro grant processes, just because you know anything to accelerate our growth and get us to where we need to go faster you know, with these is always appreciated. So yeah, there's a few um, privacy specific focused grants that we've sort of um, reached out to over the last few months. And uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. I think maybe I won't get too much into it, but since the Iran situation last year, it really turned a lot of heads towards the product, the project, and how serious we are about censorship resistance and really like building out, you know, the tools that we have. And, you know, it, it's definitely changed the perspective of the project from, you know, who are you guys to, oh, you're those guys, you know, it's like, it, it's really good. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, open lot of doors. Yeah, it really has flipped the script, I would say. And I think, you know, there are a lot of funds around the world that are looking to give money to people who are doing the kind of work that we're doing. Uh, and so we've been connecting more with those uh, people who operate those funds and distribute that money, uh, which has been really good. And yeah, you're right. The, the Iran explosion last year has really changed everything. People know who we are now and we have a way to start those conversations, whereas previously we didn't. People, people just didn't know who we were. Mm. So that's good. Okay. I, I think uh, this isn't really like, I guess we have those, those assets today, assets I'm looking in a period of time. And then it would definitely be within like the, within the next, um, actually I shouldn't put down this one, but as we push for monetization, as we push for pro, uh, it sort of, it just, it, it goes into that buy side pressure or that sort of income pressure side as well. So yes, we have these assets. Yes, we have like money, so we have money coming in the door and then we are just pushing towards making Loki net in session another sort of feature of the project to bring in self reliability and self sustainability to the organization. Wonderful. Would you ever add staking to Watson? I would love to. This is something that I'm uh, interested in, uh, interested in. Uh, I'm going to do some prelim research. It's not something that we could do easily, but it is something of interest and we'll look into it. But it until is a then, very interesting concept. But until yeah. then, it's basically a wait and see on that one. Yeah, it's but a it is see. a very, very interesting concept. Okay, what are the short-term plans to increase the use of Wox of Oxen, not of Waxen, of Oxen? Although I suppose staking would help with Waxen. Uh, yeah, that would uh, that would help. That would help. Uh, I think in terms of short term, one thing we're doing is AMAs, little short AMAs to communicate and sort of explain to the community that we're here, we're moving forward, we're planned. Um, you know, we're for real, we're here. So um, really putting a voice to the project, getting rid of FUD. Uh, it wasn't super successful in the last one, sort of created FUD in itself, but uh, just, just grabbing FUD, destroying it, moving forward um, as we build in this bear market. You know, this isn't our first bear market. So yeah, when, when, when the market's down, uh, the frowns are out, and the, bear, the bears are out, 
And one thing that we can do is just to be absolutely crystal clear that we're here and we're sort of, we're planning through this as well and we're building through this. So actually, I, I personally love bear markets. I actually love the bear markets because everybody uh, kind of chills out, not, not chills out, but like they're less crazy. They're less crazy in a delusional way, um, more, pa you know, a little bit more sad, which is unfortunate, but they're less crazy and like, oh, this is going to be like this forever. So I, I love building in a bear market and I love preparing for the upcoming, uh, not financial advice, bull markets. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what excites me. So yeah, anyway, communicating and clearing things up with the community, uh, first and foremost, uh, building, planning, and I feel that in a bear market, like in this point in time, it's really about positioning positioning yourself as best as you can uh, and focusing on the products to then monetize this year. So really, really, really short term, connect to the community, guides, onboarding. Uh, in the YouTube, we've done a lot of video content, cleaning up the guides, making things that you touch uh, much more safe and enjoyable to, to engage with. Uh, we're also working on some short form uh, sort of like, uh, Kind of, kind of clarifying what Oxen is to the community, so sort of like a high P paper sort of thing, just to understand quickly, get it, and join the organization, and join the project, and join the community. Uh, and we are considering. Now we're going to that. Uh, there's always like economic. There's always like economic pressures and like different ideas in that direction. But yeah, in in the right now, it's about communicating who we are, what we're doing, and where we're going not just verbally, but through all of our products and communications and sort of content. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, you know, the bear market is a great time to make friends. I would say, you know, you can make a lot of friends during a bear market because people aren't uh, so busy frothing over, you know, all the different things that are going on during a bull. But yeah. I think that that comes down to, you know, making friends with other people who are building in the space building those relationships with other projects, which is something that we are doing at the moment, but also, uh, you know, making friends with the community. And it could be kind of easy to, uh, for the community to not feel so friendly uh, where during the bear market when price might be a little bit down. But I've been working on a little bit of a secret special project. Uh, some had some ideas rolling around in my head about how we can connect the team a little bit more closely with the community and try them. The, the whole idea is having the community empower the team and the team empower the community a little bit more. Be talking to Josh about that probably over the next couple of weeks and hopefully sharing some of these details with a very valued community members as well in probably a couple of weeks time. I know that we floated the idea of bringing the Oxen Knights back and people were like, no, thank you. We do not want that, uh, which I totally understand. And that feedback is heard and taken on board. Uh, so we're heading in a totally different direction and I look forward to talking with everyone a little bit about that. Okay, so next question is gonna be, how many users are there on session right now? I uh, am gonna have to stick with a 450,000 plus monthly active users at this point in time. Did do a, did do a, little, did a little recount earlier today uh, and yesterday. Uh, this number's, you know, like, just, just wait and see, but right now all I can say is 450,000 plus uh, we'll, you know, we'll let you know. We'll let you know when uh, we have sexier numbers, bolder, more beautiful, sexy numbers to share. But right now, I can't say any more than that, unless we can, Alex. But I, if we can't, then we can't. I think we we can definitely say five hundred plus. We are oh, okay. well and truly right. over five hundred. Yeah, five hundred k um, plus, well over. Let's uh, yeah, yeah. write it down. Yeah. Write, write it down. down. Send a letter to um, your friends. Okay, what is happening with the uh, BKX exchange listing? The whole BKX thing was a complete confusing activity, I would say. Um, we found out through their social media that they were listing us and went on their website and there was like a blog about it. We're like, okay, great. Well, this seems like it's happening. Uh, we should reach out to them, reached out to them. Uh, the communications were a bit funny. It sort of didn't, it, it, and that's when things got weird is when we sort of like, you know, they're like, oh, it's, it's launching tomorrow or it's launching today. It's like, oh, that's getting faster and faster. Um, yeah, reached out to them and it sort of, was a bit funny and they sort of, yeah, yeah, we're gonna list you guys. And then the next day it just didn't happen. And then things went quiet. And then we're like, you know, do you want any help with things? And that was it. It just sort of just stopped. It was, it was like, a, yeah, really strange. It was one of the most strangest exchange experiences that I've experienced and I'm still not sure about. So um, yeah, probably should reach out to them again and, and see what uh, see what they wanna do because uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a peculiar time. 
very odd. But then again, the world of exchanges is potentially a little bit odd, especially centralized exchanges at the moment. You know, I think there are, there are strange things going on in exchange land. I'm happy to be yeah. over in coin land for now. Yeah. Uh, why what haven't there? On? Yeah. Who knows? The yeah. Why haven't there been any reports since 2019? I know this is a uh, a point of which causes great sorrow for both of us, Chris. <laughs> so much. We have them ready. We just we have them ready, ready to send. Uh, we're waiting for the final sign off, and so it's just been it's been like. It, it's it's been difficult. It's been painful. Uh, a lot of sorrow, as Alex said. But yeah, I just got an email today, earlier today, saying, "Okay, guys, thanks for you know the further clarification that you're not a crypto exchange." Uh, to a degree, uh, and yeah, they're, they're happy to go ahead and like sign off the audit. So this month, and I, I said February, and that's what you know we were good to go, and then you know the train just stopped. The train stopped. And we had to go through further review processes and rada rada rada, but it's all done. It's literally, it's like 99.99 .99 done. It just needs a sign, uh, and that should be done over the next you know couple of weeks, and we'll get it out to the community this month. So, looking forward to giving all that data to everybody um, after it's been audited by a third party. Uh, so yeah, hold tight, hold tight. It's coming. It, it, we don't want to hold it. It's hot. We want you to have it. Yeah, absolutely. It has been quite the process and every time you know you think that it's done and everything is ready to go you're ready to push that button some other freaking crypto project on the other side of the world or somewhere just collapses or does something crazy or does some insane thing and then suddenly the auditors are like hang on we need to stop and ponder for a little bit just to make sure that you're not like they are <laughs> yeah i think it was like the uh what is it sv bank silicon valley bank they got audited yeah. by EY just before they like collapsed as well. So I don't know if that triggered the, the collapse. I don't know what, what that had to do with it, but um, like, yeah. And then that just scares other auditors to be like, oh, why did you tick this thing off? So uh, that and the FTX just gets auditors spookied, spooked out, and they just want to make sure that, you know, whatever name they put to the thing, they, you know, do as many checks as they can. So we've done the checks, we passed the checks. Uh, let's go, let's go, we're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. All right, next question. We are now four months into the year, which I just want to pause and quickly say we're three months into the year. January, February, March have passed. And it's currently the 4th of April. Um, but that's anyhow. I, I don't know if you've used a calendar before, Alex. So it's, it's definitely four months. I suppose so. I suppose so. We'll, we'll, skip, we'll skip to the end of April and pretend it's four months for now. But nonetheless, uh, let's talk about the roadmap. How are some of the roadmap items going? How are we going to successfully implement the monetization goals that we have? Excellent. I'm just going to bring up a little roadmap in front of me so I can uh, I can enjoy enjoy its glory, bask in its delightfulness as I, I'll run you guys through it just to give you a little status update. I run from left to right. So if, you, if you're playing at home, get the roadmap up, do it, uh, oxen.io slash roadmap. Get excited. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'll run through this really quick because... We're doing many things and we got many more things to do. Uh, so yeah, so right now session, you know, if you're using session as a daily grind, a uh, daily driver, like many, many people, including myself, um, we're working on like config. Uh, so the config messaging, uh, it's called like config fix on the roadmap. If you're on the left-hand side on a session, uh, once we get this done, we move on to multi-device, disparate messages, push notifications. Um, look, I'm pretty much just going to grind through data here. So it's, it, it, if you think about this from a user's perspective, it's about like you know uh, adding unread state messages, syncing messages, multi-device, and being able to, you know, just have a really good experience between all your devices. And obviously, with all these a lot of these items, the UX UI is done, and maybe it's like 90%. So it kind of gets built in two ways: it's the design phase, technicals, architecture, and then we mock it up with UX UI and get some basic stuff done in terms of like a build. And then the build continues building off to the UI UX mockup. And then you know we test and then release. So uh, yeah, right now, config has been worked on, going through the QA process, uh, should be live soon. And then we go on to the next stages that sort of require that under underlying um, technology. So yeah, as a user, you know, your messages will be sort of, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like, it's not super exciting as a concept, but you know, once the first bit's done, multi-device, disparate messages, and push notifications are all really good um, quality of life improvements that we're working on as well. So it's tough to be like, are you working on this exact feature? It's like, well, you have to architect it, you have to design it, you have to see if the market wants it. 
um, do a bunch of research, design it, UX, UI, mock together, make sure it works on the core, and then might have to do a hard fork at different times as well. So it's not just build a feature, it's it's like build <laughs> build the whole thing uh, and make sure yep. people want it. So anyway, looking at, uh, they're doing a lot of um, quality of life improvements to the back end. I'll kind of jump the gun a little bit here. We're working on the white paper, what's it, session white paper. Where's that up to, Alex? You, you that got handed to you. I think Morgan was having a few model edits on there for the Dude, V2. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Key and I went all the way through the white paper, uh, edited it from top to bottom, updated it for a V2, uh, and then Key went away with some of his uh, nerdy dev friends and added some more <laughs> things to the white paper. Uh, and now that's back to me again. So I'll be going through those things and then hopefully it should be pretty much ready to go very soon. That's a very vague way of saying it, but it's it's probably, I would say, 85% of the way there. Yeah, when... when... <laughs> Nerdy dev friends. These guys are amazing. Geniuses. They are, they're amazing. I love what, those what guys. You... I love all of them. I love all they're of fantastic. them. Um, yeah. But it was my, that was my meanest possible way of saying uh, they yeah. went away and put some knowledge down on paper that I didn't have. And then now it's back to me. <laughs> yeah, well said. Well said. Uh, in terms of like the integration, um, we, we have to do a bit of groundwork. Uh, it's kind of like building, from my perspective, not as the absolute genius is building such such technology. Um, it's kind of like building, from my perspective, a freeway in the middle of an ocean, and we have to kind of like get them to you know connect and line up. Uh, and we keep sort of having attempts. We're like, okay, great, implement it, test test local net with sessions, see how this goes. Oh, it ran into this issue, or the connection time's too high. Okay, well, it's this issue. We have to like go back and pull the bridge back a bit and try and work out what it is and then get, come back again. So a bit of a funny analogy, but the whole concept of like, you have to build out this infrastructure, touch, see if it works, move back, and then keep trying. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a, possibly you could say brute force, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's getting, it's coming along, it's coming along. Uh, localization. So there's this thing on the roadmap called text string audit. This is, so when we try and bring session out to all these different languages, anyway, it's 1,200 uh, strings of text that we try to bring down into sort of a really clear amount of text because like desktop, Android, iOS, all of these different strings, bring it together, allows us to build in the future with all exactly consistent. Wording. It is a grind, but we are grinding. It is a huge um, grind. It is a huge, a huge grind, grind, but it is very important. I think localization, in terms of mass adoption of session, I think localization yeah. is a very underrated and extremely important uh, element, which, you know, this is a really boring but important thing on the roadmap. Yeah, it also allows community and, um, translations a lot better as well. So once we get this done, you know, if, you, if you're a community member and you're like, hey, well, the, the Italian version of session on desktop sucks and you, you know, add, add some changes, um, that only applies to desktop. So we're trying to bring all the platforms together so you don't have that challenge. And, you know, you help us in one area, it helps us everywhere. Um, really scalable assistance from the community. So we're, we're building towards the, it is a challenge and we're getting there. Uh, I don't know how many strings we got done, but I've seen people grinding for a good amount of time on those strings. So we're getting there, we'll get there soon. So groups V2, groups V2. I am so excited about this. This is when we get groups V2 out, I'm, I'm deleting every other messaging application. They're dead to me, they're dead to me. Um, and I think that this is gonna be quite a boom for communities coming across to session, like small groups and communities. Uh, it's coming along, did a lot of the architecture last year. Um, I think it is kicking off like the the UX UI is done. So how it's going to look and feel is pretty much done. I'm pretty sure, or at least like at the high, nearly complete. Uh, and then full build out has not kicked off yet. I think there's been some back end core work on this, but in terms of how this works in session on all the platforms, that has not commenced yet. Uh, just the design phase. Ah, onboarding version two. Uh, this is really exciting. A lot of people, you know, they go, oh yeah, I use Session, but it's kind of hard to get into. Like, uh, it's not super, um, uh, the experience of onboarding and, you know, connecting with friends and family is not fantastic. So we've done that. It's ready to go. Uh, it's all about when we can put that into the dev pipeline. Uh, it looks fantastic. We change a bit of wording here and there. It really make things simple uh, and easy. Uh, so that's gonna be incredible. But yeah, it's about when we can slip them into the dev pipeline. Yeah, the onboarding stuff is super exciting as well. And I think when it comes back to eventually monetizing session, the onboarding stuff 
you know, as a messaging app is so important for attention, being able to bring your friends in, have them on board easily, and then they're there and they can chat with you and they understand how to chat with you straight away just from the onboard, onboarding process is so important. And we had a lot of cross-team collaboration on the onboarding designs, uh, both from marketing side and the tech side and the product side. Uh, and I'm really excited about the solution that currently exists. Like you said, it looks awesome. It looks really good. And I can't wait to you know, show people who I tried to onboard onto session two years ago, the new onboarding and see their eyes just light up because they actually understand what's going on now. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it'll get to the point where you give it to your, you know, parents or whoever who's like not very tech literate, and they will be able to go, oh great, I get this, I just get it, uh, and that's kind of, it's so annoying to like see it and like you run through the mockups and be like, this is freaking fantastic, this is going to be exceptional, but then look at the dev uh, sort of uh, pipeline and be like, oh, we can't, you know, we can't push back other features um, because it, yeah, um, but. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, you know, the, the, the build side's not there, but the um, design side is, I think, pretty much completely done. Oh, economic papers. Uh, I've, I've moved on to the, I kind of skipped the community stuff right now because that's going to be quite, it's going to be a little bit later. Uh, I really want to push for pro before we go to there. So although it does go left to right, I don't really want to focus too much on that right now uh, in terms of community discoverability. Uh, we would like to do in-app purchases, but that hasn't been started yet. And marketplace not started yet. Not started yet. Just research. Uh, Session Pro research can't really announce too much about that one. So that's not that's not being pushed into right now. Got a full pipeline from the dev side. Um, that's more just on the research and market understanding side of things. So um, get onto these white papers. I think there is a light paper for Oxen that's been put together. That's what you had yesterday, Alex, or is that something different? The light paper, yes, uh, that exists. Uh, we, as everybody knows, we've been sort of talking about how the Oxen refresh, reframing how we talk about Oxen, uh, what exactly the brand is going to look like going forward, how we communicate the value proposition of what we're doing. Now, we did write a, a sort of a hype paper slash light paper for Oxen. Um, which we used as a bit of a testing ground to develop some of those ideas. And, you know, Chris and I, you know, we were having a conversation literally yesterday being like, well, even if these ideas don't necessarily mesh perfectly with, you know, what, how the brand refresh might end up playing out, it's probably still actually really useful, a really good idea. And when we were to drop it anyway, and we revisited the document, and I had, it was fresh eyes for me. You know, I hadn't looked at it in probably a month, maybe more. And I was like, oh, actually, a lot of these ideas are transferable, and it probably, you know, would be a really useful document. So we'll be looking into dropping that uh, potentially over the next month, sometime. Yeah, so that should be pretty good. Um, uh, where are we at? So pro session, uh, pro session. Oh, uh, Sog's bots. I think a couple of the core guys have been working on this for a little while. I can give you a progress update on that one. Uh, Power mod tools. So when it comes to close, so groups V2 is inclusive of improved moderation tools, but communities, uh, that is a separate moderation tool improvement. So that's probably going to be, it's not on the pipeline right now. I think some of the, some of the, so some of the core of it has been done for the, um, I think Jason, some, sorry. I think Jason has done some of the core infrastructure for the mod tools, uh, but in terms of implementation and the front end implementation, that is not in the works yet. Um, and deep links, I think that's just been researched at this point in time, but we have not allocated the dev time to that yet. So that's not in the pipeline. It's probably later in the year. Okay. Now let's get into some other stuff. Let's get into the oxen life. Um, so yeah, I've said the white paper before. Uh, economics. Yeah, we should do an update on those ones. We haven't. We haven't. Have we kicked into that? Have you touched those? The session monetization, all the monetization, economics documents. Uh, no, not from the perspective of you know them being in a white paper style or research style yeah. economics papers. No, uh, we've got documents that sort of outline. It's napkin maths, you know, yeah. uh, and it's really just illustrating the point of how the systems work. But in terms of more complex modeling 
we haven't uh i think json has done some of that but we haven't compiled it into a paper yeah there's like an extremely complex version and then there is a simple for a five-year-old you know, challenging five like very intelligent five-year-old uh, and i think we need to go that goldilocks zone right in the middle sort of bring them both together to make it useful so uh, not being worked on right now hopefully we'll release something this month uh and then go from there well the three well the three that's you know it's coming along uh this question is really turning into a marathon but while the three is coming along we're pushing through the um back end current li library the fun thing about this actually ledger wallet integration signed an agreement with some auditors a few days ago that's going to kick off in a couple of weeks um and i think that's sort of the final stage until ledger will implement oxen on ledger which is fantastic um yeah, so that's been good. I can't give you a date on that one, but there's some there's some serious movement happening there, which is fantastic uh, for full support on Ledger. So that is happening. Um, Exit Marketplace, yeah, we were talking about that before. Uh, GUI Popo, yep. Uh, we're doing some testing in the office. For users, uh, there's some things coming along there. But yeah, yeah, I won't go into it. This question's going for a long time. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, session integration into Lokinet, uh, that obviously has to come after we, uh, it will happen after we clean up some backend items, really doing a bit of an overhaul um, to get Lokinet ready for mobile, getting it ready for exit marketplace, getting it ready for um, mobile, something else as well. So there's quite, quite a bit of cleanup going on with Lokinet. Uh, and yeah, it's going quite well. So tune into the dev updates. You know, we do the weekly dev updates. If you want some more granular updates and like what's happening that week at that time and where we're going, uh, Josh and Key will give you that feed. Absolutely. Now that you're right, that did go for a long time. That was a big, long question. You really sunk your teeth into that one. I need to take a moment to shake it all out. You know, relax a little bit, uh, take a dip, big, deep breath because and give everyone that's watching a chance to do that as well because that mm. a whole lot of information. Do a big yawn. Do some, do some star jumps, do whatever you need to do, uh, and then we'll be jumping right back into it. We'll wait until, uh, what, 30 star jumps? We'll, we'll be watching. We'll be watching. We can see. Oh, yeah, at least 30. Please give me at least 30 star jumps and maybe 20 push-ups while you're at it. Yep. Um, so while our lovely audience is busy doing star jumps, can you please explain, Chris, how we manage to attract and retain top talent Oh, yeah. So we um, capture wild top talent uh, and we retain wild top talent and we um, get them on board the Oxen session and Lokinet train. Um, you know, we have sort of a five step method uh, that I'm going to tell you nothing about because this is our secret sauce. So we have an absolutely outstanding team. Uh, I appreciate every single one of them. And I will not give you any of my trade secrets to good culture, um, dedicated uh, team. And uh, yeah, they're all secrets. So yeah, better luck next time, chumps. You know, get get your own devs. <laughs> that my answer is uh, of, is yeah. no comment. Who knows? Is, who is a long winded question, no comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what strategies are in place for fostering partnerships and collaborations within the crypto ecosystem? uh we have from my perspective what one of the things we've like um so something that you just said before like in a bear market that's the exact time to make friends so right now we're trying to make friends uh going to a lot more conferences we've got Minerotopia. there was an okx launch party a couple of weeks ago that's some really interesting people in the space um this is when you know the true the, the true ogs the true people trying to actually build something special this is when they come to events this is when you meet the good people um you know when the market's wild you meet you meet just weird people. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're getting out there. We're getting to podcasts. We're doing our own po podcasts. Our Twitter engagement is very inviting to other, you know, privacy and crypto experts. Um, uh, yeah, but, but pretty much getting us physically into locations, something that we were lacking during COVID for obvious reasons, um, has been really good. And we, one of the major issues that we had historically is that we. I believe, and this is, uh, I only say this because I'm actively looking to resolve this with, with a few very specific plans, is that we've met the most incredible, awesome people around the world, be it investors, be it um, other projects, whatever it was, 
and we would just be so focused on ourselves that we were unable to maintain those relationships, build on those relationships, and really foster um, synergies. You know, everyone loves the word synergies. No, no one likes that word. But really foster some activities between other organizations, um, you know, to the benefit of both projects. So, you know, I, I think we let down some people over that over the last few years because we made some fantastic connections. And then we let them, we, we, you know, we let them go down. So we have built some systems to not let that happen and really captivate, coordinate, and, and you know, work with the mothers. What do you, what about you, Alex? I think that you're actually engaged in a little bit of this as well. Do you have any insight into this from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, actually, literally just this week, Wes has been making and updating uh, our Oxen Media Kit, which is something that we'll be utilizing when we get in touch with, you know, influencers in the space, when we're trying to get onto crypto podcasts, was specific for Oxen. In the past, we've been doing this for Session and even to a lesser extent, the OPTF. Um, but doing this for Oxen is going to be a really big deal and trying to connect more with the movers and shakers, you know, in the crypto space. Uh, Attending conferences is going to be a really big one as well. Uh, and attending online events, I think, is going to be a big one. I think this is something that came out of the pandemic where people started doing online meetups. And I do think that they're worse <laughs> than real meetups, but I think they still have value. So I want to be doing a little bit more of that. But I'm super excited to just get in the same room with people again this year. We've so many times experienced that once you have a moment to stop and explain to somebody that what we're doing and what we're working on and where our products are at, they get so excited. And, you know, I was talking to Key just yesterday about Neurotopia because there was a there was there was something that he wanted to discuss with me about session, and I was like, oh well, you know, this is something that we should ask some of the folks at Neurotopia about because I think there will be a lot of people there that know about this this issue, this dilemma, and um, they will have their own opinions on it, and we can sort of get a temperature read on the room. And also use it as just an opportunity to connect and maybe find solutions we haven't thought of or make relationships that we haven't had before. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there are lots of different ways that we're trying to do this. But also, you know, I want to lean on the community a little bit more on this front as well. You know, I think that the community has ideas. They know about people and they know people that we don't know and uh, we can tap into that and like I was saying before, I really want to, moving forward, have more of a setup where the team is working closely and, you know, um, is able to empower the community and what the community wants to do and vice versa for the community empowering the team and what the team wants to do. Um, and so I think that if we can hone in on that, that'll be so significant for the project this year. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think we've done a pretty good job so far this year in terms of like coordinating with the community, what we want to do and how we want to do it and sort of getting them to come with us. Uh, maybe in the last week or so, not so good, but it, in a bear market, it really brings out the worst in, you know, people and their sort of thoughts and feelings, I guess, especially, you know, people are so engaged with the project and then to see it not succeed exactly how they wish to see it succeed. Uh, really, like, it just makes it hard to collaborate with people, but, um, yeah, I think that we're going to strategize, build, and sort of really, really come out of this bear market. Sort of, I don't want to say it. I, I always try to stay away from investment advice, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I see us really um, getting into our zone, uh, coming out of this bear market, and sort of yeah. uh, getting to the top of the market. Um, the top top the tippy top yeah yeah i'm just really trying to watch my words to be like yeah uh, yeah I'm just trying to yeah. watch my words but i um i'm really confident and like proud in the team of the project to uh understand that we're in this like really shitty position in terms of market uh like all the for all these different reasons understanding those reasons and then like planning and like accelerating accelerating us out of that position absolutely absolutely so the next question, there are just a couple of more early bird questions that we'll be asking, then we'll move on to a couple of live questions, and then I suppose we will wrap it up from there. So in the last year, obviously, we've seen some notable centralized exchanges collapse. We've seen some uncertainty around centralized exchanges. People in general are just not so sure how they feel about central centralized exchanges. So are the companies fund secure, and how are they stored? Uh, funds are safe. Uh, we were not affected by the FTX going down. We were not affected by SVB and their challenges. Um, 
so yeah, so if you know, yeah, we're, we're good there. We sort of, uh, yeah, we saw that coming. Um, in terms of and how, like how we store our crypto uh, from an operational security perspective, I'd rather just um, not say uh, for obvious reasons. So yeah, uh, you know, but yes, they are Seifu. Um, we have many methods and none of them I will go into into any detail. <laughs> but thank you for asking the yeah. question. Totally fair. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out as well, you know, when we were talking about the runway before, you know, all the money that, you know, potentially could be vulnerable to something like FTX collapsing, for example, we don't even uh, include it. It's not even it's not even it's not accounted for. It's not secured. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's not included in that runway number that we gave earlier. Yep, that's correct. OK, I'm going to ask, uh, we've got a question from Lucifer, highly valued community member. Um, will LibLokiNet be integrated into the Oxen wallets to protect IP addresses when sending transactions? Uh, cool concept, not a priority. Um, it's not It's not a no, uh, but we're not working on it right now, so it's on the pipe work. Uh, I'd love to talk about, you know, one, two, three, four, five year plans. Um, but I think that just due to the attention span of uh the industry and many people in the industry i just try to keep it very specific to exactly what we're building um so cool idea not working on it right now something to consider in the future and possible I was, that's how i that's, that's my answer wonderful and wait that's the same question again never mind and now i'm another one another one uh will you build wallet functionality directly into session we answered that earlier I run a service node and want people to be able to pay using Oxen. How do I take Oxen payments and verify those payments on my website? This is actually an issue which we ourselves ran into uh, when we were selling session merchandise not long ago, early this year. Hmm. Uh, so can you pay? Uh, he's running a service node and he wants to receive Oxen payments for yeah like, I, I, suspect that, run those? I suspect the running uh oh i run a service and want people to be able to pay using oxen my bad i misread this question yeah. oh good so he runs a service wants people to take oxen uh coin payments i think we have coin payments integration so if you have coin payments that's good unfortunately they lost their shopify integration i think shopify reduced the platforms to just like three or four and i don't think that oxen's on one of those i did reach out to I'm in an email thread with somebody from a different organization. I think it was like Bobo or somebody else in the community was pushing us towards that. Maybe uh, Belmont. Belmont pushed me towards one. We're in an email thread. Uh, I I have so many freaking emails that I'm unable to respond to. Um, and that is one of them. But we are in discussion with another option. Um, I might get one of the other people on the team to move that ahead. But I'm too swamped. <laughs> I'm too swamped. But yeah, we, we are looking at other options and we'll see what we can do there. Totally understandable. Okay, so we're going to move on to live questions now. All of the early bird questions have pretty much wrapped up. There were quite a lot of them this time around. How are you feeling, Chris? We'll take a moment to pause uh, and relax for a little second, just have a little chat while we organize our oh. live questions here. Let's take a moment and enjoy no internet disconnections at this point in time. It's been smooth sailing. So I have a couple, you know, there's, there's a few possibilities why we're having internet issues, and I'm currently fault finding those as well on the side. Um, but uh, it looks there's a lot like of speculation success. about the source of, of internet issues, both in the community and within the office. There were some extremely hilarious suggestions. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, as is often the answer with slow internet, the answer is probably very boring. It can be fun, but you know, I don't want to throw any accusations out there yet. So you know, it's under investigation still. At this stage okay now let's get started on some live questions for those of you who are watching if you have anything that you want to ask now is your opportunity to do so first up any discussion of burn mechanisms for improving the tokenomics of oxen i can answer that there. yes there has been a lot of discussion about this many it, it, keep, do you go on sir do you have more you're going to say oh no take by all one? means you go on you, you oh. take the floor Question is, uh, I'm just going to rehash this one. So what mechanisms are we looking at in terms of burning Oxen? Um, LokiNet, Exit Marketplace. I know this isn't fully public at this point in time, 
there's a really cool mechanism. I'm looking forward to pushing that ahead. Session Pro, there's obviously that one as well. Um, they're the two major ones at this point in time. I don't want to go too much into detail in terms of like internal speculation and other strategies because I don't want to lead people in direction and say, well, we're not going that direction. But we are looking at other options. Um, yeah, we're looking at also putting ONS purchases in application. Uh, I think that will happen this year. Uh, so that is, you know, making ONS is easier. Um, pro version, looking at they're the basic ones that we're communicating to the public at this point in time. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about the feature too much. But they're, 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 they're the straightforward ones we're looking at. I think the ONS marketplace, uh, it's like a secondary marketplace for ONS, is, is also yeah. a very intriguing and a titillating concept, which personally I'm very interested in. And we've seen a lot of sort of namespace marketplace type ideas. Obviously, we've seen ENS. I think uh, Telegram is even doing a similar thing with their namespace system, with their network. Uh, and I think that really this can apply to ONS as well, and as well as that uh, .log addresses too. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we're doing a little bit of research into that as well. I really like the concept of marketplaces where they're much more scalable if you're sort of out of your hands. Um, so yeah, we'll go further into that. But I, I yeah, I just leave it at that. It kind of gets a bit boring and dry. But we're thinking about it. We've got yeah. some other ideas. We care about things being decentralized. Is basically the crux of that one, I believe. Yep. Okay, and I think that was actually the only live question that we had for today. Uh, thanks to Max for that one. That was a really good question, actually. I'm always interested to talk about burn mechanisms, tokenomics, and you know we have that item on the roadmap as well. The just as a bit of a final comment, the economics papers will be worked on and published this year as a part of the roadmap for Oxen, as well as more detailed uh, descriptions of the looking at exit economics as well as the session monetization economics, which I think was going to be really important for the project when those when that documentation is released. It is very complex creating it. You know, like you said, Chris, I think it's really easy to create a basically impossible to understand super complex version of this. And it's also more challenging but possible to create, you know, the five year old version of it. But I think finding the sweet spot of complexity where People feel like they truly understand the system, but also it is it is understandable. You know, it doesn't require a PhD in economics to understand is somewhat of a challenge, but something that we're definitely going to be doing this year. If you do have a PhD in economics, um, we do invite you to have a first read. <laughs> You'll probably understand it the yeah. most. So. You can join us for the table read if you do. Well, that is not a promise. I won't. <laughs> that's not a promise. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly invite you, but uh, yeah, it should be fun. Um, Wonderful. Excellent. So there's well, no, I mean, no other live questions. We, uh, we question question questioning the questioners. Today. Out of questions. Uh, oh, hang on. We have one more from uh, Nadyov, which is, Nadyov. so LokiNet on mobile is coming. Oh, um, you can, yes. I think you can mess with it right now. Yes, yes, it's coming. Yeah. You Yes. Don't hold your breath, but it's coming. It's not being worked on right now, but it's, you know, it's don't start ticking the clock either. Like it's not a um, exit marketplace first. Uh, and we're going to be, it's going to be really, really tough to get exit marketplace out this year. So, like, there's only so much time in a year. We'd say next year. Yes, next year. By next year, we'll have a, a supreme mobile version. Absolutely. And I think also, you know, we had, because uh, Jeff was here in Melbourne over the last few weeks, and we had him in our marketing sync at the end of the sync just to discuss some looking at stuff because, you know, we had the the man, the myth, the legend in the room with us, so we may as well bring him in and pick his brain for a little while about looking at. And he was discussing some recent progress which has been made on iOS, which is, you know, the Apple ecosystem notoriously problematic for our for things like LokiNet and also for LokiNet, you know, it's the most difficult platform, uh, both iOS and Apple to get it all working on. So yeah, it's really exciting to see that there's been progress made on that front though. It was really exciting to hear what Jeff was talking about as well. So that's it for the live questions, but uh, is there anything else before we leave the, uh, the AMA behind us, Chris, that you wanted to say? 
I would just say um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, the market is crap right now. We understand this. We are planning and strategizing to really get ahead and captivate the market, not just the crypto, but the privacy technology markets as well, and bring that all together. So we're not doing knee-jerk reactions. We're doing precise calculated movements to maximize a project's success moving forward. So sometimes people will say, you know, why didn't you take this quick win? Often there'll be sort of a, a bit of a Faustian deal with many of these things. We're not making those deals. We're making the right decisions for the future, the long-term future. Um, and I believe that although we're in a bit of a, you know, we're not at the top of the market right now, but we have really strong, passionate uh, and inspired people that are going to stop at nothing to get us there, including myself. Um, and our, in terms of our treasury, like we have the people, we have capital and more capital coming to then enable the people to achieve those things. Um, and it's funny, I speak to people pretty frequently and they say, it doesn't really matter what you guys are doing. You have such a, um, a well-oiled machine of a team that you guys can pretty much do anything. You, you can do anything well, or really well. Um, and that is a resource that is really difficult to replicate. So um, we have all the right tools and the people and the capital to get to where we, went, where we need to get to, and we're going to get there. So I don't think many projects can even say this sort of stuff. I don't think many projects even really have any intention in, in achieving great things. Um, and yeah, we, we do and we will. Uh, and then my final words. Wonderful. Thank you for those final words, Chris. That concludes our AMA for today. Now, if you tuned in partway through or if you uh, ran off to get a glass of water and missed the question that you'd been hanging out for the entire time, don't worry. The entire AMA will be uploaded to our YouTube uh, shortly in the future, and we'll be posting that in the communities once it has been uploaded. So you'll be able to go back and watch every single question in high quality, definition, uh, slow motion, double speed, however you want to watch it. That is up to you as a video on demand. Uh, but that is it for today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, we'll continue to be in the community answering your questions as much as possible. And of course, we'll be doing another one of these AMAs in the future. It seems that people really are appreciating them, and it's good to get that positive feedback. If there are other things that you want to see us start doing or things that you want to change, make sure you let us know, because we're always looking to get that feedback and keep improving. But that is it for today. We've just crested the one hour stream mark. So I will say ciao to everybody. Uh, and thank you very much for your time today, Chris. Thank you, Alex. You're always a delight. See you, everybody. See you, everybody.